Firstly, thank you to Alan and the team and the Hargraves for inviting me to, to speak and share with you uh, a subject that I'm incredibly passionate about, and that's design. Um, we've heard a lot about um, the word innovation, and when I talk about innovation, I always talk about design-led innovation, and I think that's, that's really, really important because design to me is what makes innovation possible. I'm hoping that I can share with you a little bit about what we do at Good Design Australia in terms of promoting design, uh, what's happening overseas as well, uh, with my other hat on with the World Design Organization, and also just share with you only three examples of products, um, projects that have come through our Good Design Awards over the years um, that to me exemplify what brilliant design and, and great innovation actually is. And when I talk about design, particularly industrial design. I don't know how many people, um, are any industrial designers in the room just out of interest? I, oh, one, yay. <laughs> um, I'm sure you'll agree with me when, when people ask you what you do and you say you're an industrial designer, uh, the very first thing, uh, the normal response is, that, so you, you design industries, do you? Or, um, and the reality is, no, we, <laughs> we design products. It's, uh, you sort of, you launch into this whole explanation of the fact that um, we, we're like architects, we just design smaller things, uh, more complex things. I throw this example up here because a lot of people think, you know, relate to this as, a, as an object of design. So it's uh, no disrespect to the French designer, Philippe Stark, who designed this. It's, uh, I think, probably the worst example of design because everyone rushed out and bought this thing and it's, it's art in my view. And art's beautiful, but art doesn't have to work. And that's the big difference between art and design. To me, design has to be functional. It has to look good. Design, believe it or not, is a process. And we've, we've heard of a lot of processes around project management and um, it, it is a process, it's a methodology. But um, this is a diagram that I think to me sums it up um, quite well. Uh, it starts with, with the ability to empathise and I think that's the most, one of the most important things about a designer, being able to step into somebody else's shoes. If you're designing a medical product, uh, you need to almost immerse yourself in, uh, uh, in a medical practitioner's space to, to understand exactly what it is that they do. The ability to define what the problem is. Um, so many times I see uh, companies going down a path where they believe they're actually solving the right problem, but they aren't. And I think that's what designers are able to do, is to ask all those pretty dumb questions about, are we actually designing the right solution here? Are we asking the right questions? Prototype, prototype, prototype. Actually go out there and, and, and build what you've, what you've conceptualized break it, try and break it as many times as you can. And, and through that, that prototype stage and through that failure uh, stage and that testing stage as well, you then learn more and more about what it is that can refine and, and better the product or the service that you're trying to, to, uh, to design. For me, good design starts with, um, uh, with solutions tailored to people's needs. Um, and, you know, you look at an image like this, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you don't understand exactly what the user's needs are, how, how can you possibly design uh, around that? I think, I think good design is, in my view, um, an incredibly powerful strategic tool. You can pull it out um, very much like those, those steps that I took you through before. Uh, it's a research tool, an ideation tool, a testing tool, a prototype tool. From an ideation point of view, I, I'd share a, a short story with you in um, something that I remember as clear as daylight. Uh, third year industrial design student, uh, one of the projects we were given was to design 100 irons, clothes irons. Um, and we all laughed and we thought, you've, you've got to be kidding me, One, 100 conceptual um, ideas for a clothes iron. Um, and we had one day to do it. And what that process taught me, and, and I guess the object of the exercise, was really how to think quite deeply about a problem. When you start getting to 20 or 30 different irons and you've, you've played around with all the different shapes and the aesthetics of an iron and the ergonomics of the handle and whether it's steam or whether it's um, electricity or you know, that's powering it, you, you sort of get to 30 or 40 or 50 and you think there is no way in hell I can actually think of anything else 
other than what I've just thought of before. When you start getting to 60 or 70, something amazing starts to happen. You, you, you stop thinking about irons. You start thinking about clothing. You start thinking about the fabrics used in clothing and is there a better fabric that can be used that doesn't actually need to be ironed? And you get to 80 and 90 and you, <laughs> and you start questioning why we actually have clothes. I'll never forget that process because um, it really defined to me that the power of just just ideation and, and being free of, of all the constraints of thinking. Good design is invisible, it really is. It's, uh, it's only when something's badly designed that someone starts to criticise it and say, you know, who designed this bloody product? It doesn't work. I compare good design to electricity. You know, you just go over to the switch and you flick it on and the lights turn on. Um, it's only when the light doesn't turn on that you start to think about what actually is going on. So I want to just show you, um, I guess, an interpretation of what's um, been published quite a bit around uh, the Danish design ladder. This is my own interpretation of it. And it just, just to show you how design has actually changed over the last hundred odd years. Um, industrial design came out of the, the, the Industrial Revolution and it was all about trying to figure out how we can mass produce items and come up with different variants of products. Um, this beautiful little company called Apple came along and I think embraced design thinking more than any other company in the world and I think put design on the billboard in terms of what it can do at a strategic sense for a company. Design is now being used at that strategic level within business and strategy um, and we're seeing it really being used um, at that upper level of design for prosperity and sustainability. I was, um, I was extremely fortunate to be elected to the board of ICSID, which is the International Council of Societies of Industrial Design. One of the critical things that um, we did during the term that I was on the board was, was redefine the profession of industrial design. Um, believe it or not, it was last defined in 1972 and I just figured out that that's almost unacceptable that we've got, here is this global body uh, with an old outdated profession of, uh, definition of what industrial design was. So we spent quite a comprehensive, um, uh, it was quite a comprehensive process of engaging the global design community to come up with this definition. Industrial design is a strategic problem solving process that drives innovation, builds business success and leads to a better quality of life through innovative products, systems, services, and experiences. I'm gonna just share with you three um, examples of, of projects that I hope speak to that. And uh, these are uh, ones that have gone through our, our own design award uh, program here in Australia. This is um, how beekeeping is currently conducted. So if anyone's a beekeeper in the room, this is a picture you're probably quite familiar with. Um, these two guys, father and son, I'm sure some of you would have seen this. They were uh, got a lot of media on the Australian story and absolutely brilliant, brilliant um, project. For those of you who know the story, they, they pretty much reinvented um, beekeeping. Uh, and the whole idea around, um, I guess, one of the things that, that also drove them was seeing the uh, number of uh, uh, bee populations around the world decrease as well because of the increased use in, in insecticides. This was the innovation. If you look really, really carefully, so this is one of the, the actual cassettes that sits in um, the, uh, the beehive itself. And uh, simply by twisting a handle, um, it cracks open the, 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 the actual beehive itself and the honey drills down and flows straight into a, into a jar. They spent five or six years trying to trying to figure this out and just um, tried every single possible prototype to try and um, figure out how the hell they were going to do this. And another one is um, Tesla. Um, Tesla won our Good Designer of the Year in 2015. Um, and not because it's a gorgeous looking motor car, more so because of the holistic approach that um, the entire company took with regards to designing not only a car, um, but the entire service offering that goes with that car. Um, I'm sure all of you know Tesla. It's, um, it's you know, one of the, the, the poster childs of uh, Silicon Valley at the moment, and they just continue to, to, to do more and more and more. Um, but I think as an example of design excellence, um, there have been electric cars that have been put onto the market before that have failed. And I think what Tesla did was to, to really 
and truly take design so seriously that um, they designed a gorgeous looking motor car from an exterior perspective, from an interior design perspective, um, from a performance perspective. But the problem that they were trying to solve is not to get people into electric cars, is to really reduce our reliance on, on fossil fuels. You may have seen this as a map across um, North America of all the different charge stations that Tesla are opening up. So essentially, you know, you can drive from one side of the US to the other. Um, and uh, it's free. You don't pay for all, for uh, charging your, your motor car, which is which is pretty cool in terms of what that says to the to the oil industry. You may have seen Tesla also announcing that they are now bringing out solar powered roof tiles. And again, it's not just a roof tile that's going to cost ten times more. They're actually trying to bring out a roof tile that's going to be cheaper than a normal standard roof tile, but it's got a solar power uh, 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 embedded in it. Um, and 10 times stronger. So I mean, it's you know these sorts of things that they're not, they actually are trying to disrupt a whole market. My third example is, uh, is, is again, another um, project that I just think is, is incredible. Um, so this is what it looks like if you suffer from anemia. Your red blood cell count is, is obviously very, very low. There's a gentleman um, who was doing a research project in Cambodia, and he found that the rates of anemia among children in a particular area in Cambodia were, were some of the highest in the world. And this is a big problem because these kids then end up growing up and have a whole lot of health conditions as well that they have to deal with. And he also found out that um, if you can cook with an iron pot, the iron actually in those pots um, dissolve into the food. So he came up with an idea and that was to distribute little iron blocks, almost the size of marbles, uh, with a whole information pack around why they should put these iron blocks in their uh, pots and pans while they're cooking so that the iron can actually dissolve and they hopefully will um, get their, their daily intake of iron. And because it was a research project, um, he started to measure the rates of anemia six months, 12 months later. Came back and uh, found that it was a dismal failure because the kids were actually playing marbles with the little blocks. So they went and did all this research and found out um, that there was the symbol of a fish, and it's very special to Cambodians from a cultural perspective. This particular fish um, uh, represented luck. Uh, so they took that exact same block and actually just molded it into the shape of a fish, called it the lucky iron fish. It came back again 12 months later, measured all the, the rates of anemia, and it worked. Um, and again, I just think as a, as a design story, as, a, as, a, as a, an example of how design can make such a big difference, uh, to me that's just gold. Uh, he not only thought about the, um, the product itself, but he thought about how it should be made. Um, he didn't want it to be complex, so he allowed the villagers, taught them you know, to, to make the, uh, and design the actual manufacturing process, which is just a simple sand casting. They did all the packaging as well. That's all for me. I hope you enjoyed it and made it to the end of the night. Thank you.